Hey everyone, this is Harsh Bhardwaj and welcome back to another video by Simply Learn. In this session, we will learn about sorting in C++. So let's go ahead and have a look at what we'll be covering today. We will learn what is sorting in C++, then the categories of sorting which are internal and external sorting. After that, we will understand types of sorting in C++ that are bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort and quick sort and at last we will understand sorting using C++ library but before we begin make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update so first is what is sorting in C++ sorting in C++ is a concept in which the elements of array are rearranged in a logical order now this order can be from the lowest to the highest or highest to the lowest. Rearranging them in a sorted order helps in dealing with many problems like searching the maximum element or the minimum element from an array of elements. In C++ sorting is categorized into two types that is internal sorting and external sorting. So let's understand these. In internal sorting the data to be sorted is present in the main memory and the process of sorting will also take place in the main memory itself while in case of external sorting the data is not always present in the main memory because the data is large so data is filled in the main memory in small portions so this is the difference between internal sorting and external sorting now coming to types of sorting in C++ there are various types of sorting in C++ that are bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort and quick sort. So let's start with bubble sort. Bubble sort is one of the easiest sorting techniques in C++. In this technique the comparisons are done starting from the first two elements. The adjacent elements are compared if the element on the left is greater than the element in the right then the swapping is done and it will proceed till the end of the array. So first the comparison will start from the first two elements that are 22 and 13 and as we know that 22 on the left is greater than 13. So we will swap these elements and make them 13 on the left and 22 on the right. Now it became 13, 22, 5, 7, 11. So now we will compare 22 which is at index 1 with 5 that is at index 2. And as 22 is greater than 5 we will swap these elements as well. Then again we will compare it with the next element and if 22 is greater than that element as well then we will swap them as well. So in this way round 1 of comparison is complete as one of the element reached its actual position. Two more rounds of the comparisons will occur till the array becomes sorted. It is because for n elements the number of comparison are n minus 1. So number of comparisons here would be 3 as the elements are 4 in numbers. Now coming to selection sort. In this selection sort technique the smallest element is fetched by comparing itself with the rest of the elements and is sorted at the first position of the array. Once the first element is sorted, the search for second minimum element begins from the rest of the array and is positioned at the second place. Similarly, one by one all the elements are positioned like this. So this is selection sort. Now moving to insertion sort technique. In this sorting technique, the elements are sorted by comparing the second element with the first element. If the second element is smaller than the first, then we will swap it. After that, we will compare the third element with all the elements that are before it. Similarly, it goes for the fourth element and so on. Once all the comparisons are done, the elements becomes sorted as we can see in the figure. 
So this was insertion sort technique. Next is quick sort technique or quick sort algorithm. Quick sort algorithm is one of the most widely used algorithm and the most efficient sorting algorithm. The quick sort algorithm follows a divide and conquer approach. In this approach, a pivot element is selected and the array is partitioned into two halves on the basis of this pivot element. The elements that are smaller than the pivot element are shifted to the left side of it and the elements greater than the pivot element are shifted to the right side of it. After this, both the left and the right subarrays are sorted and combined. For example, let's suppose we have 6 elements 5, 15, 1, 8, 22 and 6 and we want to sort them using quick sort. So first of all we will select any pivot element let's say 6. Now we will divide the array to two sub arrays based on the pivot element in such a way that the elements smaller than the pivot element are on the left and the elements greater than the pivot element are on the right. As you can see in the figure elements smaller than 6 are on the left and elements greater than 6 are on the right. Now we will sort both of these sub arrays separately. We will select a pivot element from each of the sub array. Like we can see from the first sub array we have selected 5 and the second sub array we have selected 15. Similarly if the element is less than the pivot element then adjust it on the left otherwise on the right. By doing this both the sub arrays will become sorted and now we can combine them to become a complete sorted array. So this is how quick sort algorithm works. So as we have understood about the sorting technique, now let's understand how to sort using C++ library. We can sort using the C++ library as well. To use that library function, we must include the hash include algorithm header file. This function compares each and every element within the range. The syntax of function is sort, then within the brackets, there will be the starting iterator and the ending iterator. And we must include this algorithm header file with hash include which is a preprocessor. So as we have understood about these sorting algorithms, so let's move to our code editor that is VS Code to do some examples on these sorting algorithms. Alright, so this is our code editor and here we will do some examples of sorting techniques. So let's first of all create a new file and let's name it sort1.cpp so let's add first of all the header file hash include iostream then the namespace standard so first of all we will do an example of bubble sort algorithm and now we will create the main function. Inside the main function we will create some variables let's say int i int j and a temporary variable temp. After that we will declare an array arr and let's say the size of the array is 8 and the elements of array are 12 let's say 3 1, 5, 18 and 10, 7 and 35. So these are the elements of the array. Now we will display these elements. So we will display a message unsorted array as we know that these array elements are unsorted. So we will print the message unsorted with slash n all right now we'll write the for loop int i equals 0 that runs from i 0 to i 8 because you want to print the array i less than equal to 8 i less than 8 i plus plus now here we will print the array. 
ARR I. So one by one, all the elements will get printed, and we'll add the slash t to add the horizontal space between each element. All right. Now for space, we will write. We can write and l. Now we will write the logic for bubble sort. As we know, in bubble sort, the swapping is done starting from the first two elements. And if the element on the left is greater than the element on the right, then the swapping is done. So we'll do that. We'll write a for loop, which runs from i zero to eight, and i equals zero, i less than eight. I plus plus, and the second for loop would be int j equals i plus one, j less than eight, j plus plus. Now I'll explain both of these loops, but before that, let us just write the if condition for swapping. If a R R I is less than A R R J O. I write the opposite of that, which I have to write. Let's make it I. Yeah, if A R R of J is less than A R R of I, then we'll do the swap. So now I'll explain this part. Here, when i is at zero, then j is at zero plus one. That is at index one. So now, comparison will take place between element at index one and element at index zero. If the right element, that is index one element, is smaller than the left element, that is index zero element, then swapping will take place. And similarly, one by one, each element is compared with the next element. And it will proceed till the end of the array. So now here we will write the swapping logic. We will store the first variable into the temporary variable, and then we will store the second variable into array of i. And then we'll again store. Into array of j, the value holded by the temporary variable. All right. So this is how swapping is done. Now all we need to do is to just print the array elements because it because we have to show the sorted elements of the array. So we'll first display a message: sorted elements. All right. And then we'll use slash n as well. Now here again we will use the for loop, and which runs from i zero to i eight, e less than eight, i plus plus. And now we will print the elements of the array of sorted array. Just to add the horizontal space, we can write slash t, and now after that, return zero. Let's save it and let's hope it will work. So as we can see, this is the unsorted array: twelve, three, one, five, eighteen, ten, seven, thirty-five. And this is our sorted elements of the array: one, three, five, seven, ten, twelve, eighteen, thirty-five. So as you can see, these elements are sorted. And using the slash t, we have added the space between each of these elements. All right. Now let's do another example. So now let's do an example of insertion sort. First of all, let's save it, and let's name it as sort two dot cpp. 
Now let's add the header files hash include io stream. Then write the namespace standard. Then we'll start with the main function int main. Now we'll write the variables like int i, int j, and num variable, then the temp variable, temporary variable, and we'll also initialize the array. Let's make it 30 size. Now we'll take the input from the user. So write enter the elements. Enter the number of elements first of all. Alright. We'll take the input as num and then we'll ask the user to enter the elements. Alright, now using for loop, sorry, using for loop i equals to 0 till i less than num i plus plus. We will take the input of the elements of the array one by one. So num is the size of the array. So one by one all the elements will the user will enter all the elements. Alright, after that alright now we will write the code for insertion sort. Please keep in mind in insertion sort we start by comparing the second element with the first element. If the second element is smaller than the first element then we will swap it. After that we will compare the third element with all the elements that are before it. Similarly it goes for the fourth element and so on. We can see this figure for reference and now we will start doing the code. We will start by writing the for loop which starts from 0 till num minus 1. I less than num i plus plus. Alright. After that, we will store the array in the temporary variable. Once it's done, then we'll write j i minus 1. First of all, we have copied the elements of array to the temp variable. Then we have set j equals to i minus 1 because we have to compare it with the previous element. And alright. Now we'll write the while loop. Okay, so temp is less than arr of j plus one. No, only j and for termination j must be greater than 0 all right let's make them inside the brackets all right now first of all let's write the code then and i'll explain the part array of j plus 1 array of j we will move this element forward and then we'll write j minus 1 will decrement it then we have to insert the element in this place all right I'll explain this part. In this part we have copied the elements of array to the temp variable first of all and then 
we have set j equals to i minus 1 because we have to compare it with one previous element and while in while loop we are checking if the value of element prior to array of j is more or less if it is less than we move the element in order to set it to the right position using array of j plus 1 equals to temp we are actually inserting the element in a proper place over the right position we are validating that j remains greater than equal to 0 so this is how it's done and now we have to print the elements so now we have to print the sorted element so we'll write the message we'll display the message sorted elements and then using the for loop we'll display all the elements one by one i plus plus arr inside it will write i and we'll add some space once it's done then all is left is to write return zero return zero now let's save it once it is saved then now let's check if it is running fine or not as we can see enter the number of elements in the array let's say there are five elements right eight one four nine two all right eight one four nine two so our output is wrong let's check i where it is i less than equal to this is the problem let's save it and let's check it once more five now eight five seven two six eight two five six seven all right now i get it actually we are checking from the first element so we have to start with the first index now let's save it and try one more time five nine five eight two and let's say 12 2 5 8 9 12 so finally our output is correct because of some logical mistakes our output was getting wrong but now we finally can see that 2 5 8 9 12 the elements of the array are finally sorted and this is how you can do insertion sort now after this we'll do another example all right now let's do an example of selection sort let's name it as sort3.cvb so let's understand the selection sorting technique one more time in this technique the smallest element is fetched by comparing itself with the rest of the element and is sorted at the first position of the array after the first element is positioned the search for the second element begins from the rest of the array and is positioned at the second place similarly all other elements are positioned like this as we can see in the figure now let's do its practical implementation so let's start by adding the header files hash include iostream then we'll write the using namespace standard now we'll start with the main function All right, so first of all, we'll declare some variables like int i, int j, int num variable, 
then a variable p and a temporary variable temp and we also need a minimum variable we'll name it min and now we will declare the array let's make it of size 10 and yeah now we will display a message saying that enter the number of elements we'll write enter the number of elements alright now we will take the input see in num now we'll ask them to enter the elements so we'll write slash n enter the elements alright now again we will use slash n once it's done now we can take the input of the array so we'll start with int, int i equals 0 i less than num i plus plus and now c in array arr index i so yeah now we can take the input from the user and now we have to do the actual part that is the selection sort we have to sort the array using the selection sort technique so let's start we'll write a for loop and i equals 0 i less than num minus 1 i plus plus inside this loop we will store the value of the first element of the array min equals arr of i we are storing the first element of array into this min variable so here we are storing the value now we have to store the index so the p variable which we have declared and we are storing the index i to this p variable all right after that we have to use another for loop where the actual comparisons begins now we will write j equals to i plus 1 and j less than num j plus plus now i will explain you this for loop in this for loop we are doing i plus 1 because here the comparison will take place and the comparison will occur with the preceding elements so we have to do j equals to i plus 1 now we have to do inside this for loop we will use a if condition so we will write if minimum is greater than array of j that if that is if any element is smaller than the minimum element then that particular element will be set as minimum element so we'll do that we'll write min equals array of i array of j sorry and we also have to change the index so we'll assign the index of j to the p earlier we have assigned the index i to p but if that particular element is smaller than the minimum element then we also have to assign the index to p now all we need to do is to swap so now let's do the swapping part as well all right so first of all the temporary variable temp we will assign arr of i we have to swap arr of i and arr of p because the index j is assigned to p and we all know how to do the swapping of i now we will put the value of arr of p into arr of i
now the value at temp goes to error of p so the swapping is done here and now we have to just print the sorted array so now let's first of all display a message saying that the sorted elements are right slash n sorted elements are slash n again now using for loop we will print all those elements equal 0 i less than n num sorry i plus plus all right now we will just print the array and now in order to give some space we'll use the double quotes now it's done now return 0 will write now everything is done now let's check if it is working or not it's done by our end so let's save it and let's try to run enter the number of elements okay so let's add 5 now 5 elements are 8 1 5 sorry 1 5 3 7 1 3 5 7 8 as you can see these are the sorted elements and this is correct so this is how we can do the selection sort this is our logic behind the selection sort you can try this example as well all right now we'll do an example of quick sort so first of all let's create a new file and name it as sort4.cpp now as we know in quick sort follows the divide and conquer algorithm so let's have a look at it as we know in quick sort a pivot element is selected like here we have selected 6 as a pivot element and then the elements which are smaller than 6 are put on the left side and elements which are greater than 6 are shifted to the right side and similarly same thing is done with the partitions or the sub arrays and in the end when we combine we get a sorted array so now practical implementation so first of all we'll start by creating a main function and before that we'll add the header files hash include iostream and the namespace standard all right now we'll start with the main function inside the main function we will declare a variable num and another variable i and declare an array arr of size let's say 10 now we'll display a message saying that enter the number of elements enter the number of elements all right now Here it is now we will take the input from the user num now we'll display another message saying that enter the elements and now we'll use for loop to take the input from the user i equals 0 i less than num i plus plus so inside this loop c in and arri will take the input from the user user enters all the digits or the elements now we will call a function quick and we'll pass the arguments array and the starting index and the ending index the starting index would be 0 and ending index would be num minus 1 that is size minus 1 
so this is where we are calling the quick function and after that we can display a message saying that after sorting the elements are and now using for loop again we can display the sorted array afterwards add some space yes and we'll write return 0 so our main function is done now all we need to do is to make the quick function all right so let's create this quick function quick and its data type would be void void quick and we'll pass the the arguments or the parameters are array and the starting index and the ending index start int end so these are the parameters and inside this quick function we'll write the if condition that is if start of the index is less than end that is if the array element is more than one then here we will find the point of division D and then there would be recursive calls for the divided subarrays or the partitions. So now we will make the division point D and now we will call the function divide and we will pass the parameters array and the starting index and the ending index to this function as well so here d is the division point and by calling this function we will find this division point after that we will do the recursive call for the left subarray and the right subarray so let's do that quick array and starting index and ending index but here ending index would be as it is a sub array as it is the left sub array so the division point is the point of division so the ending index for the left sub array would be d minus 1 and similarly now again we'll call for the right sub array here the starting index would be d plus 1 and the ending index would be end. Let me explain this part again. The first recursive call would be from start to d minus 1 and the second recursive call from is from d plus 1 to the end. So these are the two subarrays. This is the right subarray and this one is the left subarray. So d minus 1 is this element and d plus 1 is this element. Alright, now we'll make this divide function. And we have to make this divide function above the quick function, otherwise it will show an error. Or if you don't want to do that, then you can do the forward declaration, but I'll prefer doing this only. So Print is the data type, divide is the name, and now int arr as we have passed the starting index and the sorry, the starting index and the ending index. All right, now inside this divide function, first of all, we will set a pivot element. So we'll do that arr we always we usually select the last element as pivot element or you can select the first element as well or any random element 
now we'll create another variable int index and we'll assign it start index now this variable will keep the track of elements in the array starting from all first element and all these elements so now we'll use a for loop and now we will do the comparison with the pivot element so inside the for loop int i equals 0 sorry int i equals start because we'll start from the first element so i equals start i less than and we will not use less than equal to we'll use i less than n because we don't want to include the pivot element so that is why we'll use i less than and and now i plus plus all right now inside this for loop we will create if condition now in this condition if the array of i is less than the pivot element then we will shift it towards the left then we'll do the swapping and arr i is less than pivot then temporary variable temp and we all know how to do the swapping so we'll do that arri index please note that index is storing the start and pivot is storing the end so keep in mind that now arr index this temporary variable now we will increment this index plus plus because this index plus plus will do the further comparison with pivot element so if that particular element is smaller than the pivot element then it will move to the left side otherwise on the right side all right now it's done now the only thing left is the positioning of the pivot element and to do that because we have to find the partitioning point so we have to position the pivot element at, at its proper place so for that we'll use the temporary variable again and arr and index then we'll swap it with index so here we are done with the swapping now we have found the partitioning point so we'll return the index now the pivot is at its proper position now the, all the elements on the left side of the pivot element are smaller than that and all the elements on the right side of it are greater than that now let's try to save it and run it i hope it works there are some errors let's check all right all right let's do it and this one is this one is extra all right now let's save it and run it enter the number of elements let's say we have entered five not that place five elements three one nine five seven one three five seven nine so this is our sorted elements of the array and we have done it using the quick sort method or the algorithm and this is our code and this is our logic behind the quick sort method you can also practice this quick sort algorithm it is one of the most efficient sorting algorithm and we have done the examples of bubble sort selection sort insertion sort and quick sort you can practice them all 
All right, guys. With that, we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope it really helped you all. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.